What is good? We're ready to roll. Oh shit. Jason ready to roll. We got KJ. Ready to roll, ready to roll, ready to roll. <laughs> we got KJ, uh, the FFB tech with us. How you doing, bud? Doing good, buddy. Doing good. How you doing? Good, man. Good. We're going to hit a little rookie report. Talk about the, the youngsters. Uh, next week, we will be doing a... 2024 way too early first round rookie mock and then the following week we will be doing a redraft of the 2023 class for for two rounds top 24 uh so be sure to like subscribe comment below uh we did the risers and the fallers from this week make sure you go check that out uh among other videos coming out all week long so uh in the rookie report we are in the um risers we alluded to Stroud because he's rising uh, but we wanted to save it for the rookie report to talk a little Stroud because um, we you know we wanted to go to Bed Bath & Beyond but we know enough time um, <laughs> we never have enough time so what are we thinking about Stroud here you know how, how far up what, what kind of quarterbacks would you be looking to move for Stroud do you have confidence in Stroud are you selling Stroud what are your initial takeaways on Stroud turn down an offer for field straight up for Stroud all right I I can. I, I don't hate it. We're going. Yeah, I think we're going two different ways. You see, and you're seeing a guy like Stroud go out there and actually process the game. It doesn't look too big for him. They got a first year head coach and a first year OC out there, and four and, missing and, offensive and four linemen. missing offensive linemen, and they're and they're out there, you know, being competitive. And 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 Stroud is looking uh, the part right now. Uh, outside of Anthony Richardson, um, un, unquestioned as the QB two in this class. Some people were saying unquestioned QB one. And I'm like, eh, no. just the leg upside of Anthony Richardson that we saw immediately uh, and, and yeah. the arm really not being very questionable. There's going to be some growing pains for sure. And he needs to learn how to take care of the body a little better. Can't be missing games already. Uh, but the legs of the upside of, of Richardson. So wouldn't swap Richardson for Stroud uh, just yet. But w what would be a, a nice little Stroud swap for you? I am definitely holding Stroud everywhere. I, I, I drafted a lot of Stroud because I was fine taking him ahead of Bryce Young and I never had to. And so I, I don't think I, I'd have to be very motivated to move. It would have to be a really good piece. Yeah. Um, seems so, seems like everybody's at a, in a solid holding pattern. I mean, he's how, how can you not be right? He's QB 13 right now. Uh, nine points the first game. He's QB 13 with nine points the first game against the Ravens. Uh, wow. You know, that's a that's a tough Tough slate, your first game out there. You know what the Ravens, you know, that's always a tough matchup. Uh, and then 21 and a half, 20. He's averaging 17.2 a game. He's third in attempts with 121. Fifth in completions with 78. Fourth in yards with 906 already. Tied for eighth in yards per attempt with 7.5. Four TDs, that's 11th. And zero uh, interceptions right now. Uh, and, and scrambling around a little bit, you know, not necessarily doing anything crazy with the legs, but showing you the ability to elude Good decision pressure. decision making. Yeah, he means has no yeah. interceptions. Right. So, I mean, I, you got to be ecstatic right now if you're a Stroud owner. Exactly. You weren't you weren't uh, having to move up. You just kind of took the QB that fell to you. Right. That was that was the best part about Stroud was you knew he was going to be game ready as people you know really love as prospects coming out and he's just proven you right over and over i mean the first game was brutal but it was baltimore exactly like you said the, i mean i'm ecstatic for stroud i i i put out multiple tweets coming out that i was like well, i wouldn't be surprised if he was you know just way better than what we saw with bryce maybe i shouldn't say way but uh <laughs> I was I was very ecstatic to see him kind of come out and do his thing because I thought the receiver core was actually better than Carolina's, uh, but mm -hmm. I guess that doesn't really say much. Yeah, right. No. And, and you know, obviously, you know, Dalton comes out there in this week and they lose uh, and they but they throw it a ton and the offense just looks a little more you know effective. But Dalton's a you know a. a a wily veteran in the league, uh, but it just we've seen this before, right? But it just. There has been some okay stuff with with Bryce. You just thought that the processing uh, and and the uh, you know calm nature of kind of how Bryce goes about, it. and also you know also a really good scrambler to elude pressure uh, in his own right, uh, but already missing some time with some size concerns. I don't know if that's necessarily fair for him missing time right here, but I I, I had a, a, a at a coin flip, and I was slight lean towards Bryce because I did like. 
uh, the processing a, a little bit better. I like the head uh, on the shoulders, but I mean, you, you, you're wrong. <laughs> you know, it's Stroud uh, way ahead of Young at this point. Any helmet scouting going on there? I don't think so. I don't really get terribly caught up in that. I mean, it hasn't worked out with Ohio State quarterbacks, I guess. But, I, you know, I don't. I'm, and I guess, hey, look, you're you're out there with a ridiculous receiving core that's better than the receiving core than you're probably ever going to play with again in your life at any level. So, you know, I get it. Like you're throwing to Watt. You don't have to learn how to fit the ball into windows. I heard somebody this week saying basically the difference between Justin Fields and Brock Purdy is Justin Fields didn't have to figure out how to put it in tight windows because his throws were fucking easy to make because they're just they got a ridiculous core and a ridiculous O line. Purdy's out there having to elude rushers and f- figure out, hey, this guy's open when he only has this much space rather than you know this much space, which. I don't know how much that actually plays into things, but it certainly looks like it with field because it doesn't like field isn't ready to pull the trigger seemingly unless it's wide open. And then even sometimes it's not there, but Stroud, you know, not at all an issue. Uh, Accuracy is, is on point movement skills on point processing on point, making a lot of the right decisions. It just doesn't seem too big for him. And that's, I think what you look for immediately with a quarterback and it's fine. I'm okay with saying, Hey, he's a rookie. It, give me a year, a year and a half, but it, it, Stroud looks great right away, man. Stroud, especially in this last game, looks like he just stepped right from that Georgia game in college, right? Right into yeah. the NFL field. He, you see what you wanted to see. There weren't many scrambles, only three, but they were timely and a big first down in that game when it was in, in flux. And he just, he had him out in front. The game was never really in doubt for the Texans. They were just they yeah. put the pedal to the floor. And Jacksonville has a decent defense. You know they're no slouch. Yeah, and yeah, they that, can get after you. The fullback and, punt return was the was oh, I feel like Jesus the step on the throat for, yeah. for 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 uh, that was Jacksonville to injury. Like there's it's so brutal. many missed tackles on that piece of garbage play. But uh, uh, and then the T law pick was a nice pick by by uh, later in that game forget who it was on the Texans but no sacks for uh Stroud this yeah game. the first That's couple games one. he was getting sacked a lot but again understandable um so CJ Stroud uh just huge huge uh if you've drafted him in a startup in the third round uh paid off in a super flex tight end premium right now you're feeling good about that uh would you Kyler or Stroud Ooh. so I traded so in that same trade I traded Kyler for Four fields instead of Trout instead of Stroud, so I guess I have Stroud over Kyler. Mm. I think I'm sticking with Kyler with the rushing upside. I like where this offense is. Kyler has been a top five, eight quarterback most times when he's out there and healthy. Uh, so I'm still sticking with Kyler. It's it, you know it's one of those things where you're seeing Stroud right now. It's so much yeah. fun. Uh, but uh, Kyler is just. I think more of it for me was the devil I know versus the devil I know. Not even the devil I know, but just it's easier to project what's looking ahead for. Stroud, okay, he's going to be in Houston for the next four to five years. I don't know if Kyler's A, going to play again this year, or B, if he does, what he's gonna, where he's going to be at next year if the Cardinals continue to be at the bottom of the... But they just beat the Cowboys, and they've been in every game, and the exactly. Cardinals are a tough out right now. And no, I'm not saying they're not. Well, which gives me more hope just for more Kyler that he's coming into a situation where... Michael Wilson looks like he's coming along. Speaking of rookie report, Marquise is playing well. They got Earth, Bride, Connor's balling. Like they, they seem to be rallying around this environment, and and they, they're one and two, but still, like they didn't plan on winning very many games. And yeah, I mean, it's, that it's, all bodes well for Kyler. I feel like the reasons he bias makes me want to take Stroud right now, though, because it seems like it. Maybe he could hold up a little better. I don't know. Yeah, that's tough, man, because uh, Kyler has a rushing floor that just Stroud doesn't have. But, um, yeah, that's that's really tough heads up right now. I think that's a move you could get done. So if you feel like this is somebody you want to have on your roster more than Kyler, that's a one-for-one one I think you get done right now. Um, I think I'll stick with Kyler, yeah. I, <laughs> as brutal as that is. But I, I think that, you know, we just haven't seen Kyler on the field yet. And so this team looking this good with Dobbs at QB – 
uh, with all the surrounding things working for them, I think that's going to take them to just another level that we haven't even seen yet. I think that yeah. we're seeing that a lot of things needed to change for that offense. And it also doesn't look like Houston is maybe, I mean, Houston certainly could be the number one pick, but both of those picks, it's it's theirs and, and Houston's. And if, if one of the, if they don't all go, you know, if they aren't top three necessary or top two, probably, I mean, it's, it's May, it's Strat or, or May and Caleb. And then if not, then you probably stick with Kyler, right? You may, maybe even yeah. May you stick with Kyler, depending on how the year shapes up. Yeah. Um, Williams, it's hard to say that you're going to keep any of your quarterbacks besides, you know, a select five or six over maybe, you know, maybe even less than that four or five um, over him. So, all right, let's switch over to the counterpart that, uh, that, that Stroud pounded the table for and then picked them at pick 69. Had to know something was up there. Uh, Tank Dell, baby, Um, coming in just was as advertised. Basically. I think he looks what you saw on tape from uh, Houston, came right in and you you didn't you weren't sure if the separation would still be at the same level but we are right there and it looks awesome uh they look like they got a vibe going on he's at a 22 percent target share uh in the last uh two weeks and 32 percent of the team's um market share yardage uh a robust 12.76 uh yards per target that's pretty strong uh for tank uh qb percentage 143 or completion percentage is 143 when targeted how do you have a completion um, percentage above 100 percent? i don't know but his completion percentage Throw an extra hand man is 143 when targeted uh that was via fantasy points data uh so they might that was a, that was I think squared somewhere wrong that was a something. that was number six overall and fifth in yards per target over expectation with 3.6 uh, and that is with a little bit of a filter on there. Over expectation with, drink. With some people, obviously, if you only have one or two catches, some of those are really high. But anybody who's caught a, you know more than five or ten balls, he was fifth in there with guys like Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, you know, the big dogs, uh, yards, uh, yards per target over expectation. So a lot of things really in Tank Dell's corner here, as well as fantasy points usage uh and and having a bit of a rapport with the guy who size went to bat for him small kings baby that's what this draft was all about and they're shining right now so you know i mean shit half the running backs in the league right a chain you know crushing cook crushing uh tank dell crushing you know wait wait wait's a thing of the past man you know Wait to think of absolutely. Past. I mean, you know, look at look at uh, Devonta Smith and mm-hmm. and how we we've seen mm. just mm-hmm. the smaller frame receivers just completely decimate defenses. It's just it's a game where you can't even really touch people anymore. So, <laughs> so it it became a lot easier. But I mean, route running runs supreme, right? And if you if speed kills, so uh, I think that we're going to just see more and more of this where we're down on undersized receivers unnecessarily because I mean they're just going to keep popping like this if you just have a player that's an an absolute above tier talent that you can see on the field, it's going to translate. So, yeah, I mean, what what, what were the last two weeks? Fantasy points mm-hmm. wise, twenty and twenty five. Twenty and six, you know, six point yeah. four week one. Really had a big play at the end of that game, sort of ish in garbage time, but they were kind of making a comeback, and then Tank Dell just really put the kibosh on them boys. Um, and you know. What we're seeing from Tank Dell, I don't, I don't think it's a, uh, you know, I don't think it's going away. I think this is Nico and Tank, and even if there's some down weeks, Rashad or yeah, Rashad Woods, Robert Woods isn't isn't long uh, for, you know, probably this team and organization. We do have to maybe worry a little bit about what this team looks like with Noah Brown back and when Mechie is healthy and in the rotation. So they they have a lot of guys in there that that can rotate in, but. I feel very comfortable with Tank Dell and Nico Collins moving forward as being the guys of the future of this offense. Um, and you didn't quite see it from Nico. You did see some some of that yak ability from Nico uh, on a big play at the end of the half there with with him. But Tank Dell, we told you to buy last week. I, I don't know that you're buying necessarily this week. You could hopefully wait for another down week. Um, was there? Would you send a first for Dell? No. Ooh. I'm not, no, I'm not. I'm no, not I can't, there. I can't. Had to spice right it up a little bit. We got to come in hot. Um, I got tanked out. No, I he's he's uh one of those guys who you saw, you know, you plot the draft out, you, you go through all the picks, and then you see, hey, picks three 
th three one through like three five. There's a group of guys here who I really like, and then there's kind of a cliff that falls off. So I'm trying all my drafts. I kind of traded in there, and a lot of them I was able to either or tried to get two picks even in that range and, and grab Downs and, and Dell or. Uh, you know, I liked Tillman, uh, you know, get in there and, and grab those guys, Michael Wilson. Uh, and then it did, you know, so seemingly kind of fall off a cliff a little bit there. And, you know, maybe Puka was in there for some people or Puka was right outside of there. That's typically the range where kind of all those guys went. Win. And, yeah, and right now that looks like a fucking draft sweet spot right now was that that mid to, or early to mid third round. Those guys are looking like they are going to be a, a decent difference maker for your team. So. Pay to third two twos then for tank. I think we kind of talked about that a little last week. I think I would do two twos. I would do it. Yeah, absolutely. We're talking PPR dynasty, obviously. Um, Can I give you a two and two two Atwell? <laughs> he's been making some plays. Ship yeah. that guy out for another yep, small I, guy. I would definitely do I that. I mean, we just they just had two two Atwell just needed some more, you know, smaller guys to come in before the, the Rams <laughs> were like, Yeah, we could use him. We can use him. <laughs> Did he get normalized first? Uh, but sure, yeah, tank tank on the uh, rookie report, really crushing. Uh, and then obviously we can't do the first rookie report of the year without putting our guys a flowers on there. Um, wide receiver 25 on the season. Uh, and I don't even think we've really even seen him get going yet. We, we know he can win on all levels here. I think this offense has, you know, some they're figuring it out a little bit and have some maturation and steps to take of figuring out how to attack everything. And as this offense grows and involve or and it evolves, um, Flowers is already pretty much locked in as the wide receiver one in this offense. And I just feel like as this moves forward, him and him and uh, Lamar kind of gel together and, and they learn this offense together and grow. I feel like the the ceilings, of the roof here, um, he's leading the team with 25 targets, a 29 percent team target share. Next closest in targets is Andrew with Andrews with 13, obviously missed a game. Um, but leading in team receptions with 21 next closest Andrews and Aguilar with nine, um, you know, and we haven't even got a TD out of flowers yet. We haven't even really, we saw one deep shot there last week, but we haven't even quite seen that he's a double move maestro. That guy crushes the double move. Good luck, uh, keeping up with him. Uh, so flowers just exceeding all expectations. I think right now, um, I hear a lot of. I see a lot of hate on a lot of Twitter's. hate on flowers. And, for yeah, sure. It's so gimmicky. It's crazy. Do you know how he has the A dot and, and, and the manufacturer? It's like, do you see this man on the field? Because he, you can't tackle him. Right. Like, you can't tackle him and he can beat you deep. We like, haven't even got him going yet. I think that, right. I think that's more or less what I'm taking away from this. Like we're, we're manufacturing things to keep to this see, simple. I've seen seems. exactly what I needed to see. Yeah. I know like uh dynasty Zoltan who's been on this show a good about has been crushing flowers. It just seems silly. Like why, why are you picking that hill to die on man? Like, I, I guess you're just trying to go confirmation bias that you didn't like him in the draft process. So you're sticking with it. I don't, I don't really know, but I will not yeah, take the that's slander. That's really it is people are just holding on. And I was like, you have to watch what they actually do at the next level before you could just keep holding on to what you see. I mean, you have to be able to move off if you were wrong. You know what I mean? And right. some people just aren't okay with doing that. Man, I saw a poll today where somebody was like Puka Nakua or Zay Flowers, and it was 40% Puka Nakua. And I was like, you're kidding me. Like 40% of people, you could actually go trade and get flowers for Nakua yeah. right now. Like that's, right. that's pretty wild in dynasty. <laughs> well, good, good segue. Cause we had a Patreon question that I said, I wanted to bring up on here. Puka Nakua and flowers for Jalen Waddle. It's a start three wide receivers and his other three, his three wide receivers right now are Jefferson lamb and Waddle. And he doesn't have a whole lot of depth behind them and it's two flexes. So any thoughts on maybe, you know, growing your depth portfolio a little bit with those two guys and getting off of Waddle. I, I think you might be losing the best player in the deal. Mm -hmm. uh, which is something I don't like to do uh, typically in a dynasty trade. But however, if I really feel like I, I don't know the rest of the pieces on the, on the roster, that's the hard part, right? If I think I can carry competitor, he said. Competitor, heavy competitor. I think I'm keeping Waddle. I, I think that we've seen an upside with Waddle where I, I and in that offense where I Ooh. probably would hold, but it's close for sure. I think that flowers is that dude. And we're just going to see him progress even more as we go. And Nakua, it's just the only thing that scares me is past week four, right? Is what happens when Cup comes back. I think it's not going to completely eliminate him. He's still going to be very fantasy viable, but he's not going to be to the point that we've seen thus far. Like he's not going to be just well, we, shit. Maybe he gets everything party. that Puka Nakua is not getting right now, right? All the 2 2 Owl, all the Van Jefferson. Like he can or be week six, Cup's right back on IR because <laughs> yeah. he's a. 
He's a tweak away. He's 30 years so. old. Were you shaking yeah, your head I mean, at no on the deal or no you're bad about the Rams no on the No on the TV? deal. Oh. Not even close. <laughs> Not even close. It's Waddle. It's, I, I'm, I, I don't get the people who are like, oh, well, I have all these other good guys. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna trade these guys for a... Or like we see that I see that in the Discord all the time. People are like, well, I've got a I've got a I've got extra quarterback, so I'm gonna trade them for a discount. Like that's not nah, how someone, this works. Someone was telling one of our people in the Discord that that's why they traded it because one of our guys got a steal on a quarterback. And don't do that. Like if you're set at a position, don't sell cheap or give deals away because no. you have too many good players in a position like the dumbest thing I, thing I ever heard. Two times for a quarter, man. Why do people decide to do this? I don't understand it. Like you you just decide that you don't need to sell at the cost that they're at. And like, yeah, but that's still the going rate is the going rate, man. Right. You, you still sell for what you get. If I see Puka and who was it? Flowers. Flowers, Flowers. go for Waddle. I'm like, I'm at least like, at least they paid yeah. up for Waddle. Like they did pay a decent amount of value right now for value. I, I value flowers pretty highly and Puka just set the world on fire. So I, I, I think well, I'm on the waddle you, side though, for sure. Could you get waddle for a one and a three right now? No, exactly. No, but that, that price doesn't stand anymore. I mean, flowers has exceeded the one at this point and Naku is, I've seen, one. is, is I've a seen, one. I've seen Puka go for a one already too. Exactly. It Easy. Is, is, yeah. That that's the craziest part to me is that Puka's cost is inflated, but I, I mean I don't think that you should be selling at that cost. I mean you're you're holding Nakua or yeah. you're getting a, a, a ransom, but if you're the Waddle owner, I don't I don't understand how you can just look at that and think you're coming away as an extreme winner on it. I guess I don't know. I, I just I always want the best part of the deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean there's a good rule of thumb for the most part. All right, let's keep it moving here. How about Josh Downs? How are we feeling about Josh Downs uh, three weeks in here? Um, this past week was was a nice little reassurance for for Downs. Uh, Pittman had 84 snaps. Pierce had 81. And Downs only had 67. But then when you look at, uh, you know, routes ran, it's Pittman 49, Pierce 46, and Downs 41. And then when you look at targets, it's Pittman 11 targets, Pierce 7 targets, Downs 11 targets. Oh, um, so, yeah. you know. We got, you know, uh, roughly a 25% with quick math, 25% target share week three for downs. And then, you no know, Richardson an 82% yeah. route participation, you know, and more, more air yards this week than, uh, than Pittman. So, I mean, come on. This is, Minch, Minshew and downs are working together on that second team in the <laughs> uh, off season. I don't know. I, you know, downs, downs has been in a nice trajectory. They like, um, Who's their wide receiver yeah, he's, coach? He's played 79, 75, and 80% of the snaps. Oh, who's their wide three receiver weeks. coach? Please Reggie look Wayne. that up right now. Reggie Thank Wayne. you. I knew, I knew it was a, a famous Colt receiver. Reggie Wayne said he was the best receiver in the draft, hands down. Um, and now he's on their team. Uh, but he clearly loves the guy. He's getting the snaps. We were a little worried that year one, we weren't sure how, the, how it would go with the slot guy on that team. And obviously, we've had Minshew for a game and a half now. But Anthony Richardson doesn't look like he's going to be quite the long project throwing, you know, as from the little bit that we've seen, I think it's fine. Um, so Josh Downs, I feel like is, is definitely a, a, a trade target for me. It wouldn't be the guy I wouldn't approach him as trying to go get him as a singular piece. I don't think, but I would definitely be trying to get him in any deal that I do with a team that owns Josh Downs. Anybody have thoughts on Downs? No, I'm with you on that. On on that evaluation, I'm definitely in. You know, if I can get him in something for for uh, you know a package trade, and, and I need the depth, then I'm okay with it for sure. Uh, I I do worry just because we've had such like an up and down with the QB, just because Richardson's been knocked out multiple times now, uh, and and so I'd like to see that consistency with him being one of the more primary targets with Richardson on the field. Uh, but, but that's really the only knock that I have on him. He's looked great. And I'm sad that I was an Alec Pierce guy. <laughs> yeah. Alec Pierce was plummeting last week. Stays pretty much plummeting. He just, he dropped another one, uh, this week and just can't seem to put it all together and, and really, uh, shine out there, but he's, he's, he's on the field. Um, he's running routes. He's running routes. Uh, so that's really all Party you can ask. You know, that's, that's kind of what makes me lean a little bit more even into downs is I don't think we've gotten what we need out of Pierce. Down well, seems like the other guy where, you know, 
a part of us liked him and we're down to take him. We thought it was going to take longer than this. So you're already seeing like a better return on yeah. your investment. Than I you. think monetarily, if I had to place a value, like a, I would trade a two for downs, essentially. If, you know, if we're placing a value on downs to, to trade, I don't know that I would go out there just throwing that around. But if I was placing a value on him right now, I'd say. And that's cost. I mean, ba basically, yeah, by the time exactly. we were doing it, it was he was two late 12, two, early three, three, two, somewhere in there. Um, so maybe a little bit of a, you know, you could maybe send the two for somebody who got them at three, three, um, and they would feel good about it. So, uh, but I do think there's, there's something blossom in there and he looks good. Um, and the last one on the rookie report for me is Rashi Rice. We talked, touched on him and, uh, one of the, one of the episodes we did this week, um, you know, number two, uh, in targets per route run with uh 0.40 overall, um, and, you know, 25% targets on the routes that he ran this week with, while Mahomes was in. Uh, and I just, I think this is, is so wide open right now. You know, we talked about, hey, Sky Moore, sell him. Uh, you know, Tony has been um, really highly targeted on the routes that he's been running um, when he's in there. Uh, but, you know, he, he missed this game for the most part. Uh, Richie James is out. You know, we don't know how long MBS is playing. Is the Rashi Rice thing going to pan out for you right away, right now, and, and be like a guy that you want to put in your lineup? No, but I think you can get ahead of this uh, a little bit. And we've seen that there could be, hey, I, I'm in a jam. I need to start Rashi Rice. I think there's some possibility. The door is open right now for him to even gain a little bit more traction and a little bit more trust uh, with Reed. And it feels like the door is wide open. I don't think Sky Moore's is taking advantage of anything. MVS is MVS. Um, you know, Kelsey's going to be Kelsey. And, you know, they do seem to like Kadarius. And like I said, when he is out there and healthy and the limited amounts of routes that he runs, his target volume is through the roof uh, for kind of what he does. So uh, that seems to be potentially his main competition out there for, uh, you know, grabbing a hold of something. And, and you know, Kadarius hasn't stayed healthy uh, and he drops the ball. So. <laughs> Uh, you know, Rashi Rice, I think, is is a nice a nice buy right now. I don't think he's done a whole lot to really elevate. I think you could still go get somewhere around cost uh, where it hasn't been anything crazy where you've got a crazy elevation of, you know, I got to pay a whole lot more than maybe what somebody paid for Rice. Any thoughts? Exactly right. I, I, I mean, his snap percentage, I know I keep harping on that, but it's going up and you're seeing them trust him in, in the high high pressure situations like they're they're trusting him when they need him to and i mean honestly he, he had his second td this week like he, he was there yeah and i mean if he had that td i think we feel a lot differently about the trajectory of him as a whole and i mean we don't usually see a utilization from a rookie wide receiver in an andy reed offense like we have seen just so far with just the trust factor and I mean, uh, Mahomes wanted him. I know we've seen this before uh, with other wide receivers. Sky Moore. But yeah, exactly. But, but it, and for, I mean, for Rasheed, it's working out. You know, we've already seen way more out of Rasheed than we did with Sky, right? Exactly. Yeah. Rookie year anyway. Total combined. And I mean, it's it, you're right. It's just the wide receiver room is wide open. He could dominate. And I mean, looking at their schedule, this might be your your last chance this week and next week against New York might be your last chance to really get a, a, a the reasonable the entry. Yeah, Jets. then they have Minnesota, Denver, the Chargers, Denver, Miami. I mean, I could see smash games coming for Rice. Yeah. Well, I think Richie James is out until week seven, which I know that doesn't sound like a crazy thing, but it's like it just they, they have been rotating a lot of receivers in. And depending on what Kadarius you know, what that toe injury is and, and how long it takes him to get back to even where he was, but certainly was a little bit of a competition with, with him and rice vying for some spots. But I really like what rice is, is putting down out there. And I think he's, he's gaining momentum as, as the weeks build here. And this is a nice little stretch for him. Uh, like you pointed out jets next week could, could be a struggle. Um, but you know, they, I feel like the jets are one of those teams where, they're, they're, they could get their back broken a few times in the defense and just not care that much. So it could also be another game where, hey, and I think that's a, is that Sunday night. Yes, it um, is. So Rashi primetime. That first Rashi Rice game was primetime week one. Sometimes those blow up games in primetime are, are the worst for trying to go get a guy. Um, so I don't think he'll blow up against the Jets in primetime again. But 
I do. I think Rashi Rice right now would be kind of downs and him would be by before it's too late uh, kind of deal as well, throwing them in there. So uh, any anybody, any other rookie that you guys are particularly high on that you would maybe say, eh, maybe go put some feelers out. Hmm. I think Roshan, which, you know, I think I've, I've beat that with the dead whore. I feel, sure. I feel like I, I was going to mention it, but I didn't want to be that guy. Uh, so we got another thing coming out by before it's too late and he's on there. So, dude, no one has any memory. So yeah. just <laughs> what, say what you, you have. Say. You have to hit him over the head time after Bludgeon time after time him. for them to remember and anything. It still won't even matter. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, the, all the, a lot of these shows wouldn't exist anymore. Outplayed her- keeping track. Outplayed Herbert this week, too. And Mims. I mean, Mims. Yeah. Mims is on there for sure. I got him on the buy before it's too late. So I don't want to get too deep into some really good juicy stats with the little amount of stuff that he's done. But it is just a matter of time before Mims uh, is is un- unobtainable, I think. So. All right. Rookie report. Let's go. We did it. Be sure to uh, tune in next week. Like, subscribe, comment below. Uh, we got a. 2024 way too early one round rookie mock coming up to kind of get those guys those names flowing uh, like the salmon of capistrana and then we got week four we're going to do a top 24 rookie ranks kind of re-ranking the rookies from the 23 class so a lot of rookie talk coming up and then week five we'll be going and actually diving into some dynasty ranks and and actually moving guys around we've been talking risers and fallers but we're going to put some uh you know pen to paper there and actually move guys i guess it's mouse to spreadsheet for a lot of you losers but uh i'm all i'm all uh legal all day baby it's it's nights like this i wish that i didn't want to watch football and i could just do numbers all day and not have not care about watching football but man monday night we're recording got a hell of a game on our hands here yeah we'll catch you into this (laughs) i don't know if that one again (laughs) kj we appreciate you make sure you check him out yeah man at the ffb tech on fantasy and you'll be seeing a whole lot more of him uh with the ffd here so we appreciate you we'll catch you next time appreciate you guys peace